Hi, Joellen. So this week, we are continuing to cover the senses within the setting story elements, and we're going to cover smell. Excellent, excellent. And we know how smell is very important in describing on our books. So tell us how we can make it more memorable and how we should be using and implementing the uh, sense of smell into our writing. So it doesn't stink, shall we say? Yes, we don't want the scene to stink. Although maybe we do, because that could be important. <laughs> okay, maybe. <laughs> okay, well, last week we covered sight. And we covered it first because it's, it's typically the most used sense in a story, but I don't want people to forget about the other senses. Mm -hmm. So just a little recap. So smell is similar to sight in that you can, you need to describe the odors, but they must be described from the point of view characters senses and not from something they can't experience. And if you write descriptions that are rich in smell, it's going to bring the reader into your story. So the most obvious use of smell is that it can trigger a character's memory. We all know that we smell something and go, oh, remember when, whatever, mm -hmm. maybe good or bad. And it can provoke an emotional response, which then shows something about your character, which is what you want for character depth. The memory can be good or bad. And here's, here's what gets really interesting with the story elements, is that you want to use them all together. And so we have 38 of them and a, a mem or a smell is a great memory trigger into a flashback or a backstory. So when you want to give a piece of backstory or you want to jump into an active flashback scene, smell is a great one to do it because of the way the human brain works when you smell something. And so it comes across as very natural in your book. Mm -hmm. You can use smell to create tension. Mm -hmm. So if you use conflicting smells they can work against each other so say this is really icky, but say the putrid smell of a dead body mixed with a lover's perfume oh. now think of the trigger there right that now maybe you're thinking you know okay someone murdered this person and maybe it's my lover because i can smell their perfume mm. right or their cologne whatever you want to use so you you want to make sure that when you're using smell, it's something related to the plot and it makes it a little bit more exciting. Okay. But when we're using this, I'm sure there's something that may or may not be the best use. So what are the pitfalls we need to avoid when we're using smell in our, in our scenes? Yeah. So one of the first things that I notice when I'm editing is when maybe sometimes when a writer is trying too hard, they use a smell that the reader won't be familiar with. So it's something very specific to an industry um, that not everybody would know about and they're trying to be a little bit fancy or I've got the smell but if the reader doesn't understand what the smell is then it's meaningless to them they can't relate it to something and they're not experiencing the story and it will take them right out of the story which is a bad thing because then they're thinking well what is this smell well maybe I'll go google that because it's kind of interesting and now they're off on a google trail and they're not reading your book anymore yeah. so if you need to use a smell that is is you think might not be very common you then need to take the time to describe it and use the smell in a way that the reader can understand what it is okay the other thing i see is um characters not or writers not um comparing smells so if you vary your description you can say you know something smells like something so the perfume smells like a rose and that's okay it's better than no description it's, it's a common way of doing it but you can add things like how potent or weak is it? So how strong is that smell? Mm -hmm. What type of smell? Is it wet earth? Is it plum? Is it cherries? Whatever. Mm -hmm. And what does the character remind? Sorry, what does the smell remind the character of? And then you're bringing it right back into character again. All right. I think that's so important because, you know, instantly when you say it generates something, I think of like percolating coffee, any coffee that is percolated in old glass you know, coffee mm -hmm. that I'm instantly laying in bed at my grandmother's house and it's early morning and I'm just waking up, you know? Yep. And uh, so those are very distinct and, and it's something you, you can't control. So it's very nice when you can create these right. uh, sudden responses in your writing. So right. I think just bringing yeah. it to the forefront of how important that can be is, is quite example. So every day, every time we do this, we talk about what can we do today? How do we put this into action? What's our suggestion? Yeah, so here, um, 
you know, I kind of hinted at it here, but we're getting to the point in the story elements where you really want to pay attention to how they're interacting with each other and not just on its own. So every writer and editor is watching this. They've come a long way through the elements. And as we talked before, um, with all of the elements, you need to keep track of what senses you're using in your story. And so with smell, you can go two ways. You can just use a check mark that says, yep, I use the sense of smell. Mm -hmm. And when you're done all of your scenes, you're going to be looking at all of the senses together and see which ones you used and how you balance them. And did you only use one or did you use all five or mm -hmm. however you want to do it? And the other thing you can do is you can actually list the, the smells so that you can you can look and see if you think you have a tendency to be repetitive, like the coffee example, mm -hmm. always coffee, you need to get away from it as a writer. Mm -hmm. um, and if you are trying to really enhance an emotion or think harder about what would trigger a, a flashback, and maybe with your example earlier, the flashback is you used to love that memory and yeah. you smelled this percolating coffee, but one morning you're at grandma's house and while the coffee's percolating, she has a heart attack and dies. And so oh. it's a terrible memory. I know that's sad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love my name. Um, but you, you you can really think about it hard when you're using them. Okay, what is it triggering and what what emotion do you want both the character and the reader to experience from it? Excellent. So we're going to go through that and check our smells in all of our scenes, every scene once again. And again, if you need any, any automated electronic help with that, of course, you can check out Pictionary. That's what they do.